Confined to my house by the order of my superiors, I spent the past year or so reading all manner of writings, tales of war, records of the house of Tokugawa, and the like. In so doing, it came to my attention that there are innumerable examples of brilliant generals and brave warriors who disregarded the laws of heaven, whether in governing their realms or in dealing with their subordinates, and whether in times of war or of peace, they resorted to tyranny and arbitrary laws and fell into habits of luxury and luxury. And even if they may have been successful for a while, they all eventually lost their dominions. Again, instances of valorous warriors who fell short of accomplishing their aims and came to grief for defying the teaching of the sages are almost too numerous to count. I realize that this is, was true for both China and Japan. Every one of those who have brought to ruin or lost their lands has been punished by heaven for neglecting the properties between sovereign and subject, the bond of affection between parent, child, and brother, for wallowing in greed and extravagance. All the more wondrous, then, that I have survived thus far without mishap. Indeed, I am so overwhelmed by the mercy and goodness of heaven that I even hesitate to show my face to my fellow men. Surely heaven must have blessed me, because even in the midst of my errant ways, I helped people out, giving money unstintingly, and rescuing them from difficulties. How else is one to account for my present state of comfort and ease? My son Rintaro is serious and associates only with friends who are good and shuns the company of those who may have a bad influence. He studies the military arts. He is devoted to me and looks after his sisters. He is frugal and never wasteful, and never too proud to wear simple clothes or eat plain food. He sees to it that I lack for nothing. My daughter, too, have taken complete charge of the household and see to it that my wife and I suffer no hardship or inconvenience. My years of retirement have been truly comfortable and pleasant. Supposing my children had turned out to be worthless like me, such comfort and ease as I now enjoy would have been impossible. This too is truly wondrous and leads me to believe that I have yet to be abandoned by the gods. So listen to me, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Follow the example of my son Rintaro and act so that your descendants may prosper. From the age of eight or nine, leave all else and devote yourself day and night to your studies in the military arts. Read as many books as you can. Better that than some half-baked learning. Girls, from the age of ten, learn how to arrange men's hair in proper samurai style and to fix your own hair as well. Take up sewing. From about thirteen, do things for yourself and learn to read and write as well as the average person. For then, even after you are married, you'll have no trouble managing your household. My eldest daughter has never had to ask for others for help from the time she was fourteen. On the contrary, the rest of the family looks to her. Now, boys, aim to be strong and sturdy of body. Eat simple food and work at mastering the military arts. If possible, strive to excel in at least one art. Serve your master, the shogun, with utmost loyalty and your parents with filial devotion. Treat your wife and children with benevolence and your servants with compassion. Be conscientious in your job. Associate with friends in truth and sincerity. Be ever thrifty, eschew luxury, and wear simple clothes. Cultivate relations with those who are upright and seek their advice in following the path of righteousness. In choosing teachers, select those who are virtuous and without pretense, even if they are not of the first rank in their professions. Do not consort with useless friends. Be discreet in your conversation and respect your superiors. Keep things to yourself. Venerate your ancestors and take care that no sacrilege is committed. Arrive at your place of work one hour early. Study the literary and military arts as though you were cultivating a field. In your youth, fill every hour with the pursuit of various branches of learning. Spare time only invites the devil to work his mischief. Avoid the so-called polite accomplishments. Moderate amount in old age is permissible, but if carried to excess, you'll turn out like me. Rather than planting shrubs in the garden, raise crops. Only then will you fully understand the lot 
of the peasant. Strive to know the workings of the human heart. Ponder over your findings and keep them to yourself as guides to conduct. When instructing students in an art, treat them with sympathy and sincerity and be especially patient and painstaking with those who are not to your liking. Never show favoritism. In approaching all things with earnestness, you are following the path of heaven and ensuring the happiness of your descendants. If you regard whatever you do as a duty, you should not find it hard to bear. Above all, abstain from greed. Do not entertain it even in your dreams. Uh, I was guilty of this, and look what's become of me. Take me as a warning. Set aside possessions in accordance with your stipend. Should a friend or kinsman face an unexpected calamity, be generous in extending help. In arranging marriages for your children, do not make alliances with those above you in social station. As much as possible, choose from a poorer family. If one aims too high socially, one soon becomes arrogant. In hiring retainers, too, choose sons from poor families. And when they have completed their term of service, see to it that they are given appropriate status and rank. Do not give yourself up to carnal pleasures. Watch out for women. A moment's in caution can wreck family and home. Do not be remiss in, in discharging your social and moral obligations. Make peace among your friends in private. Go about your household affairs with moderation and gentleness, and you will never lose your authority as master of the house. Aspire to the path of the sages, for in adhering to their teachings in all things, you will avert grief and misfortune and be assured of a peaceful and tranquil life. Now, I myself have resolved to follow the path of righteousness henceforth. More than anything, devote yourself to learning and act in accordance with the teachings of the past. With a suitable amount of exertion, there is nothing one cannot achieve. In fact, you will find that once you've worked at something long enough, the rest will be easy. Never stray from the path of reason. It is important to make something of oneself, gain honor and fame, and bring prosperity to one's family. Look at me, for instance. Forsaking reason and common sense, I wasted my time in activities unworthy of a human being. Not once did I hold office. And because of me, the house of Katsu, which had served the Shogun honorably for generations, was disgraced. A more telling example you'll ever find. True, I've finally come to my senses, but no amount of regret is going to do much good. I am regarded by my fellow men as ne'er-do-well, and when I send someone to over to retrieve any articles I might have lent, people say, why should we? Why, when, when, when old Katsu got the goods dishonestly in the first place? The same goes for money I have lent. Some people have such a low opinion of me that they don't even have the courtesy to answer my requests. And come to think of it, they're probably right. In such cases, too, one should not bear a grudge. Just blame yourself for whatever has happened. Render an act of kindness to your sworn enemy, and there will be no cause for trouble. As for myself, I'll admit I was resentful when I was put under house arrest by my commissioner. But then I thought the matter over carefully and realized that I have been the one who had started the fire, so to speak. So now, in atonement for my sins... I recite the Lotus Sutra every evening and secretly pray for the success of those I misjudged as spiting me. Perhaps because of this, my health has improved markedly of late. Nothing untoward has occurred in my family, not a harsh word exchanged, and each day is a past and pleasant laughter. I find it truly curious, and it is to pass on this piece of wisdom to my descendants that I decided to take up my writing brush from time to time. Carefully bear in mind the fruits of good and evil. With what awe and gratitude should we recall the debt we owe Lord Tokugawa Yasu, who suffered such tribulations during his childhood and endured long years of warfare? To him do we owe our present age of peace, the absence of all worries of thirst or hunger, and the comforts of family and home. We would also do well to remember the hardships of our ancestors, for us, their descendants, to tuck our hands in our kimono sleeves and live off the stipends we inherit to forget the past and indulge in extravagant clothes and food, or worse yet... Not even to serve in a government post is surely to fail in loyalty to our masters and filial piety to our parents. Ponder on this. Nowadays, people do their work seated on the tatami without the least anxiety. At the very worst, someone may stumble and fall down. The least one can do is rise early, get to work, sleep at night without any cares, eat light and simple meals, 
forego luxuries, and pursue the path of righteousness. Regarded as sufficient if your everyday clothes are not tattered. Regarded as sufficient if your clothes for office are not soiled. Likewise, regarded as sufficient if your roof does not leak or the tiling on the floor is not worn through. Be frugal at all times, attend to household affairs, and consort with your colleagues in a manner appropriate to your station in life. Thrift is all to the good, but do not be stingy. Just remember the meaning of the two Chinese ideographs, frugal and miserly. In reading books too, if your attitude is wrong, you will end up as some good-for-nothing's dictionary or bookcase. The same is true of the military arts. If you go about your training as if it's an exercise in brutish strength, your limbs will become muscle-bound and you will be about as much use as someone's sword rack. Please take these words to heart. The same rule applies to becoming a real human being. If you succumb to avarice, you may appear human on the surface, but inside you are but a cat or dog. Your first concern should be to strive for true humanity. If you do not pursue learning in the military arts with the correct attitude, you will become a cripple and a misfit and might as well not study at all. Remember how well important it is to have the proper spirit. Children and grandchildren, heed my advice. As I have said, I am altogether ignorant when it comes to writing difficult characters and have made many errors in setting down this record. Read it nevertheless with great thought and great care. A little bit different this week. I hope you enjoy that. Um, in case you're wondering, it is from a manuscript called uh, Musui's Story, the autobiography of a Tokugawa samurai. The Tokugawa samurai in question, his actual name is Katsu Kokichi. Uh, the translation of the manuscript it was done by Teruko Craig at the University of Arizona Press. This is what it looks like. Um, it's kind of a little hard to find. It's an interesting, interesting story if you want to know about Tokugawa Samurai. So anyway, that was the prologue. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.